Imagine you're walking through a forest. Looking up, you stop in your tracks as you see no other than a pterosaur flying overhead. Its odd body structure makes it completely different from anything you've ever seen before. Not to mention, it's huge. So how is it flying? Let's take a closer look. There it is. Looks like it's about to take off. It's pushing itself off the ground with its legs and its wings, without any help from slopes, running starts, or air currents. What it just did is called a quadrupedal launch. According to Dr. Mark Witten, they can even launch like this from the water, though they might have to hop a bit before leaving the water. It's interesting to see how differently birds take off. They push themselves off the ground with only their legs, so they do what's called a bipedal launch. As the pterosaur flies, notice how it switches between flapping and gliding? Most of them do, but it could vary. Those with slender wings have steadier flight, while those with broader wings are more maneuverable. They remind me of seagulls when they flap glide, but since they're so different from birds and bats, how exactly did they stay airborne? If you think about it, pterosaur wings are more similar to airplane wings. It's mainly the way air flows around airplane wings, and any wing really, that creates lift. If you make the shape of the wings curved by adding flaps, this creates more lift. What makes pterosaur wings different? They don't need flaps. They're elastic, so their wings tend to curve slightly as the air pushes against them. This is called passive cambering. The word passive means that the wings are affected by something from the outside, while cambering just means curving. They might have been able to make certain areas of their wings more curved than others with their muscles, but a lot of it was probably done thoughtlessly, like how your muscles tend to flex when you're lifting weights. So you can think of them as smart wings. Just imagine how much we could advance in modern aerodynamics by learning from the very first backboned pioneers of flight. But what else makes pterosaur wings different from airplane wings? Well, the most obvious difference is that they're not made of aluminum, but have layers of tissue, including the vascular system, fascia and muscle tissue, and actinofibrils. The vascular system includes the blood vessels, the fascia is the tissue that holds everything together, and the actinofibrils are the fibers that let the pterosaur fold and stretch its wings, almost like the stakes of a hand fan. Pterosaur wings have air sacs to help them breathe and have hollow bones, kind of like birds. But all pterosaurs get tired eventually, and this one's coming down for a landing. Watch how it lands feet first, just before setting down its wings. And there it goes. Now that the pterosaur has left us, it's time that we leave too. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed it.